Greetings YouTube, it's JC Badheaded Pro with another video about audio and today a slideshow about my favorite tape format that I have ever used and that is the Broadcast Continuous Loop Cartridge Tape Player. These machines were very common in radio stations from the early 60s all the way up till around uh, 2000 or so. But uh, today they have been largely replaced by digital audio delivery systems where you uh, store your audio like an MP3 or a WAV file on a hard drive and then you play it back from the computer. I have to apologize in advance for the, some of the pictures in this slideshow because uh, they're not the greatest quality in the world. So let's talk about cart machines and what makes them so neat. Well, first of all, here's a picture of a cart. And uh, this kind of looks like an 8-track tape, just a little bit. But as you can see, there's a big hole in it where the uh, pinch roller flies up from the machine itself and then pinches the tape. This is an AudioPack A2 cart, which was a pretty basic cart. And, uh, and I think this is about a 70-second cart. They came in lengths all the way from 10 seconds all the way up to 10 and a half minutes in this particular size of cart. This is a A size cart. And to give you an idea of the uh, other sizes available, here is an A next to a B. And here is a really ancient picture of a C size cart. And these were huge. Finding the machines to play these was really, really hard. And most radio stations didn't bother with them. With this particular type of cart at uh, 7 1⁄2 IPS, you could get about 45 minutes of tape in them. But anyway, back to the A carts. You have uh, the uh, audio pack, which I showed you. And here is a uh, Fidelipak gray cart. Uh, this is a Model 300, as a matter of fact. And this was one of the original carts ever designed. And they were making them uh, all the way up until about 2000 or so. And uh, another brand of cart, uh, actually one of the better brands of cart, is uh, Scotch Cart which was made by 3M, later by uh, a company called ITC. They were making this particular brand of car. Here's a bunch of them in a box. And as you'll notice, uh, they're very unique. They have no moving parts in them other than the spring. The tape just kind of sort of slides around itself on that big hub. There's also no pressure pads in these carts. The uh, lever that you see that prov uh, is uh, holding the tape there provides enough tension where the carts didn't need any pressure pads uh, like 8-tracks. Well, here's a tour of a cart machine itself. We've already seen a picture of this guy right here. This is an autocord machine and it's one of the later ones to be built. Uh, the Autocord company built some fine machines in the 80s, 90s and uh, I think they closed up shop around 2000 or so because the demand for cart machines went down. A quick tour of the machine itself. You'll notice on the right is the basic player and then on the left the record electronics are in a different box. That was usually how cart machines were done. It was more economical that way. Um, a typical radio station, if they were going to buy cart machines, would buy 10 or 15 of them, and they weren't cheap. They usually went for around three grand a pop, and then they would get maybe one or two sets of record electronics, uh, one for each studio, because you only needed one recorder in each studio. But anyhow, on the right, you'll see that the machine is very basic, only three controls, start, stop, and on the audio cords, they had a mute button. He would hit mute, and the cart, uh, uh, it would kill the audio until the cart stopped. Over on the left-hand side is the record electronics. These were really nifty machines. They had very nice meters on them. Uh, to set the record levels on the machines, you would use a screwdriver, and uh, you would line those meters up with the meters on the uh, broadcast board, the console in the studio. And uh, you'll see this one has a timer on it, which was very useful. The red button arms it so you can record, and uh, the uh, blue button there is the secondary tone. And uh, we'll get to what that's all about in uh, just a minute here. As a matter of fact, here is a... Um, chart that shows the different formats of quarter inch tape and I got this from a uh, Ampex basics of magnetic recording manual from around 1960 but it does apply uh, you'll see full track you got half track mono there you got uh, two track stereo and then 
the three track that you see there is the track configuration for a broadcast card machine. The top track is left, the middle track is right, and the bottom track is the Q track. When you put a card in the machine and you hit record, what happens is, is uh, you start the machine running and it lays down a tone on the tape and uh, that tone is at uh, one kilohertz and it uh, puts it down there for about a half a second. Now what this tone does is it indicates to the player when the cart has come back around and needs to be stopped. The advantage to using that tone was the fact that you could put as many things on a cart as you could fit. So you could like say take 15 or 20 different jingles or liners or little promos and put them on one long cart and they would evenly rotate. Another tone that was used uh, was the secondary tone, which uh, was a tone that indicated when the audio on the cart was finished and it sent a signal to fire the next cart machine. When you were recording carts, you had to pay attention when you were dropping your tones and make sure they were in the right place, otherwise the, uh, the next machine might fire too early or too late. Some stations didn't use these tones at all, others did. I always preferred having them because it made you know, your life so much easier. Then there's another tone called a tertiary tone, which was an 8,000 uh, cycle tone. And that tone was mainly used for a tally light in the studio. And it would warn you that uh, whatever was playing on the cart was going to be over in about 20 or 30 seconds, and you better pay attention. Now, another interesting thing about carts is the fact that the machines themselves do not erase tape at all. They would uh, record right over top of a cart if it had something on it. So in order to record on a cart, you had to bulk erase the tape first. And uh, the bulk erasers for cart machines came in three flavors. This is my bulk eraser that I use for cassettes and videotapes today. It's a handheld eraser. And then there was a desktop eraser. The problem with handheld erasers and desktop erasers was the fact that if uh, you pulled the cart away too quickly from the eraser before you turned it off, you would get a whoosh whoosh sound on the tape. That tape really needed to be completely blank. So the ITC company, who built some fine cart machines, uh, came out with this little guy. This is an uh, automatic eraser for A-size cartridges. You put the card in and you push the buttons in the right sequence and what the machine does is it very slowly starts running the tape and an electromagnet under the tape itself, right under the deck, would fire up and it would erase the cart and it would very slowly fade out to uh, make it like you were pulling your hand very slowly away from the bulk eraser. And then the machine would kick into a fast forward mode and start going at 22 IPS and uh, the uh, machine would run until it found the splice in the tape. Once it found the splice it would stop. The idea was is tr to try and avoid recording over the splice in case uh, that would cause a dropout. Here's a uh, quick look at some of the different kinds of machines, and most of these are machines that I have worked with. Here is a uh, BE three-stack machine. These machines had one really tall capstan in them. Here is a Harris model, a little bit unusual, of another three-deck uh, player. This is a uh, picture of some ITC SP three-deck machines in a radio studio. Here is a, uh, another three-deck machine. This is a ITC Delta uh, three-deck cart machine. And uh, this was a later model that ITC came up, up with. These were very common in radio stations in the late 80s and all through the 90s. Here's my favorite cart player of all time, though. This is an ITC SP single cart machine. And, and as you can see, if you take that little uh, deck bridge out of there, you could play a B-size cart in this machine, but uh, most of them came uh, with the rail so you could play a A-size cart, and uh, these were probably one of the higher quality players uh, ever made, and they ran forever. These uh, could be as much as 20 years old and sound great with uh, just regular maintenance. So there's my little video about uh, cart machines, and if, you, if you're really curious about this format, there are a few pages on the web that are dedicated to explaining how it works, and you can just do a, uh, do a search for either cart machine or broadcast cart machine, and uh, you will learn more about them. JC, Bad Edit Pro, waving bye-bye for now. Talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.